in Montana, like many other states, there's a, has been an explosion of farmers markets and vegetable growers who grow for those farmers markets. We've also seen a lot of growth in recent years in uh, produce distributors who are really looking for locally grown and organically grown vegetables. And so there's more opportunities to get into grocery stores and other sorts of institutions. So the opportunities for uh, vegetable farming have grown a lot and, and I think will continue to grow. The markets are readily accessible with farmers markets and those sorts of things. And it's a lot lower startup costs. You're buying a packet of seeds for a few dollars, not a tree, an apple tree for $20. And the return is a lot faster. So for growing either fruits or vegetables, the first step is always looking at the soils and, and, and how much water you have. There are a lot of places that, that are perfectly suited for vegetable production, but there are some that either have soils that are too acidic or too alkaline, or soils that may have a history of herbicide use, uh, especially in pasture, there are some herbicides that will damage sensitive vegetable crops for three to five years. And then the water, because you want to look at do you have enough water? Uh, wh where is that located? What are the water rights to be able to grow a nice healthy crop? We grow a wide diversity of crops. Uh, we focus on salad greens and lots of baby root crops, carrots, beets, turnips, radishes, and things like that. And we also have a, a robust greenhouse production as well. We grow microgreens on a year-round basis and lots of seasonal vegetables as well. The markets that we sell to also appreciate a diversity in offerings. Uh, the chefs that we sell to uh, often can't get some of the crops that we're growing off the truck, and that's a draw for them. And our CSA members that subscribe to the farm also appreciate a little diversity in what they're getting over the course of the year. So in, in uh, diversified vegetable farming, your, your main pests are going to be weeds. You will need to also think about keeping wildlife out, deer and elk. Uh, that can browse down a lot of your crops. But weeds are gonna be the big one for organic vegetable farms. There are mulches that you can put down, black plastic mulch and, and fabric mulches, wood mulch, hay mulch, uh, that are quite effective, but again, a little bit more labor intensive. There are also some uh, tillage tools, tractor mounted hand weeders uh, that, that can be used to great effect, both in the row and between the rows in a vegetable operation. Anywhere in Montana, you have to be prepared for deer. We've got a great by me, a deer fence that's pretty effective for us. Uh, and you need to plan for water. Um, after that, the main things you need to, other, other than you know, knowing how to grow, would be um, you know, how, to, how are you gonna get all that stuff seeded, weeded, watered, harvested, packed, washed, packed, delivered. Um, there's a lot of logistical, uh, a lot of logistical things that you need to you know, plan for. And labor at, you know, at this point in our operation, 17 years in, this is our 17th year growing season, labor is still our number one issue. Uh, when we first started, it was my wife and I, and that's it for a few years. And it was a lot of work, a lot of everyday work all summer long. So that's something that new growers ought to be prepared for is the intensity of it all. Over time, having local food sources in our community has become important to our community itself, just for the availability of delicious, fresh, healthy produce. It's becoming more and more important to folks in their lives. And uh, for us as small growers, it, it provides a living for us and 17 employees, 20 employees, depending on the time of the year. And uh, it's just a, it, it diversifies our economy and it makes for a more robust um, place to live in. Yeah, it's a good economic driver.